everyone welcome back to this channel today we will discuss about the care of bedridden patients care of bedridden patient is a form of care administered to a patient who is unable to stand walk or sometimes even sit this type of care is usually done in the home by a family member or a healthcare professional. Nurses assume a significant role in caring for bedridden patients and preventing the complications that arise from any disease condition. The topics to be discussed, hygiene, bed sore, back care, comfort and elimination needs. Back care, taking care of the back can be done by massage, changing position, sponge bath, air mattress, and applying emollients. Comfort. Always support patient limbs and back, arms and legs to be positioned comfortably. Provide comfort devices if required such as pillows, backrest, footrest, bed block, sandbag, air cushion, air or water mattress, and side rail. Next, we'll see about hygiene. Hygiene includes bed bath, oral care, hair care, and nail care. Bed bath. There are two options for performing a bed bath. One is using disposable wipes and the other is traditional soap and water. Oral care. For conscious patient, we can always use a toothbrush. For unconscious patient, uh, with Megal's forcep using chlorhexidine solution. Nail care. Nail care gives the patient a neat appearance and helps prevent them from scratching themselves. Regular nail care can remove bacteria from underneath the fingernails to help prevent infection. When trimming the two nails of a diabetic patient, ensure there is proper lighting and take special care to trim the nails in a straight line to avoid cutting the patient's foot. Hair care. Hair care is a vital part of the hygiene routine. While hair does not need washing every day, brushing the patient's hair can boost their self-esteem and prevent knots from forming. To brush hair, begin brushing gently towards the end and progress towards the roots. If there is particularly difficult section of the hair to comb, hold the hair near the scalp to prevent excess pulling. Next, bed sore. Damage to an area of the skin caused by constant pressure on the area for a long time. This pressure can lessen the blood flow to the affected area, which may lead to tissue damage and tissue death. Bed sores often form on the skin covering bony areas of the body, such as the back, hips, buttocks, elbow, heels, and ankle. Bed sore is also called as decubitus ulcer, pressure sore, or pressure ulcer. Stages of bed sore Pressure injury stages consists of four stages. Stage 1 is non-blanchable erythema of intact skin. The intact skin with localized area of non-blanchable erythema, it may appear differently in darkly pigmented skin. Stage 2, partial thickness skin loss with exposed dermis. Uh, wound bed is viable, pink or red, moist and may also present as an intact or ruptured serum fill blister. Stage 3 is the full thickness skin loss. Full thickness loss of skin in which the adipose visible in ulcer and granulation tissue and epibole are often present. Stage 4, full thickness skin and tissue loss. In stage 4, full thickness skin and tissue loss with exposed or directly palpable fascia, muscle, tendon, ligament, cartilage or bone in the ulcer. How can we prevent this bed sores? A daily inspection of skin is necessary and keeping the skin dry and healthy, moving the wheelchair bound patients and bedridden patients every two hours, exercising even if they are done in the bed with assistance since they improve circulation, Maintaining proper nutrition to boost the overall health and wound healing and using of soft padding in beds and wheelchair to reduce pressure. 
treatment how can we treat bed sore removing the pressure from the affected area keep the wound protected with medicated gauze or similar special dressing ensure proper nutrition keeping the wound clean applying dressing stroke from inner to outer removing the infected damage and dead tissue that is debridement and treating with inf infections with antibiotics next we'll see about the massage technique massage technique first is effleurage these are long sweeping stroke that alternate between firm and light pressure and which can be performed using the palm of the finger or the fingertips the knots and tension in the muscle it tend to get broken with this massage technique second one is petrissage petrissage this is the technique of kneading the muscles of the body to attain deeper massage penetration the thumb and the knuckles of the fingers are used to knead the muscles of the body third is tapotment or rhythmic tapping as the name suggests it consists of rhythmic tapping that use the fists of the cup hands Next is elimination needs. Nurses need to assist with elimination patterns to ensure patients are having regular soft bowel movement and adequate urination and to identify abnormal patterns such as flatulence, constipation, diarrhea, incontinence, fecal impaction, hemorrhoids as well as polyuria, anuria and other abnormalities. Urinals Urinals are the most frequently used for male patients since they are easier to use with male anatomy. Urinals allow the patient who has cognition and movement of their arms to urinate with or without the help of staff. Next is the bedpan. Bedpan is a receptacle used for the toileting of a bedridden patient in healthcare facility and it is usually made of metal, glass, ceramic or plastic. How do we use the bedpan? Hold the bedpan with one hand and the hip with the other and roll the patient onto the bedpan. Avoid patient injury by never forcibly placing the pan under the buttocks. If a biatric bedpan is needed, multiple staff members should assist to prevent injury to staff and patients. Make sure the bedpan is adequately positioned so the patient avoid missing the bedpan and soiling the linens. A privacy blanket or sheet may be used to protect the top sheet. Next is the portable commodes. Portable commodes are medical commodes that look like a chair and have a bucket-like receptacle beneath it which can be removed for cleaning. Using this commode is a better option than going to the bathroom every time the need to urinate strikes. Adult diapers. Allow a patient to defecate or urinate without using a toilet. Every effort should be made to check the diapers regularly. Always use the moistened wipes, thoroughly clean the diaper area, both the front and the back, and apply the barrier cream to the perineum to moisturize and protect the skin. A bedridden patient confined to their bed is likely to need catheterization for bladder management based on the circumstances and needs of the patient. Doctors and caregivers will use the most appropriate catheter. Some common types of catheter include suprapubic catheter. This method involves passing a tube surgically through the abdominal wall directly into the bladder without going through the urethra. It is one of the most common ways male and female quadriplegics manage the spinal cord injury bladder problem catheter usually need to replace after every six to eight weeks indwelling urinary catheter or foley's catheter a catheter is inserted into the bladder through the urethra with an inflatable balloon end to keep the catheter in position at the bladder while the outside end of the catheter leads to a drainage bag. The catheter needs to be changed every 4 to 12 weeks. Silicon catheters. They are made entirely of silicon instead of latex. It causes less injuries and reduces substantially ir irritation of the urinary mucosa. And silicon catheter can be used in patients requiring long-term indwelling urinary catheter to be changed when medically indicated and routinely every 30 days. 
intermittent catheter. For this method, the user inserts a single use catheter through the urethra into the bladder to urinate as and when necessary. This requires the user to have full use of their arm and hand. A female patient would also need to be able to get into a position where they can reach their urethra. As such, intermittent catheters are less useful for the patients. External catheter, also known as a condom catheter or a male catheter, it consists of a sheet made out of PVC, latex or silicon with an adhesive to attach it to the penis and the standard tube coming out of the other end connected to a drainage bag. This is sometimes favored over indwelling catheter because no inflated balloon or urethral tube is inserted, reducing the bladder irritation and urethral trauma. The catheter needs to be removed and the penis washed at least once a day and a new catheter should be used every day. Thank you. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to this channel.